The canal's official opening was scheduled for August 15, 1914. Twelve days before, a ship called the Cristobal made a final practice run and became the first seagoing vessel ever to successfully cross from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific through the Panama Canal. It's pretty amazing going through the locks. You nose forward into this space, then 26 million gallons of water pour by gravity through underground culverts into that lock and raise you up 30 feet or so. It's an amazing, beautiful, dramatic experience. And when you're on the ship and you feel it rising up and you move, you feel it rising up and you're witnessing what's happening, your ship climbing a mountain. I mean, that is mind boggling. It had taken 10 years of ceaseless grinding toil, an outlay of more than $350 million, the largest single federal expenditure in history to that time and the loss of more than 5,000 lives. But the successful completion of the Panama Canal had defined the United States to the world and announced the arrival of a new power for the new century. It was a symbol to Americans. This is what American power, technological know-how, determination, managerial organization, all of those things that Americans prided themselves on and still do to a certain extent. This is what it can do for the whole world. After 500 years of people dreaming, now it was done. Atlantic and Pacific Oceans were forever united. The United States were now firmly established as the most powerful nation on Earth. It all occurred at such a pivotal moment in our history. The failure of the French effort was very much the, the sort of the dying gasp of the Victorian age that had been dominated by Europe. With the opening of the American Canal, the power in the world had shifted irrevocably and the American century effectively could begin. Though the Panama Canal was arguably his greatest legacy, Theodore Roosevelt never saw it once it was finished. An expedition to South America kept him from attending the canal's official opening, and he never again visited the isthmus. Of the tens of thousands of West Indians who'd come to Panama to build the canal, most simply returned home again, quite often with not much more money in their pockets than they'd had when they left. The building of it was a harsh nightmare for the diggers. But it's one of the wonders of the world, and it's with pride that my grandfather and his contemporary look across at that, knowing that it's one of the biggest enterprises that the world has ever seen, and that they have participated in that. They did it. For Jan and Rose Van Hardeveld, the years in Panama had been an epic adventure. Of all the Americans who had been employed on the Isthmus, Jan was one of the very few who'd been there since the beginning. And as Rose remembered, the award he'd earned for long service, the Roosevelt Medal, was always in his pocket. Sometimes in the evening, she would find him staring off into the distance, turning the tiny scrap of metal over and over in his hand. I couldn't help thinking of those who worked beside me, who lost their lives. I thought of the many times when I nearly gave in to doubts, that the canal could ever be completed, that it was ever meant to be. But most of all, I was remembering how my answer to my own doubts every time was my faith in my country. I have always believed that America could accomplish anything she set out to do.